So Daniel asked God a question about the prophetic visions that he had. He said, I heard, but I did not understand. Then I said, oh, my Lord, what shall the outcome of these things be? So Daniel wants to know the visions that he's seen. What's up with that? What's going to happen? How is this all going to play out? And so God replies to him, go your way, Daniel, for the words are shut up and sealed until the time of the end. And so as I always say, we could be dogmatic about these prophetic events that are going to happen, but we cannot be dogmatic about how they happen. Because it's changing all the time. These events recently in the Middle East have put everything back on the table. The Psalm 83 war, there's an ancient prophecy in, in Jeremiah chapter 49 about Elam. And so things that we thought are, have been fulfilled may have only been partially fulfilled. Israel is now fighting a war on multiple fronts. Hezbollah in, in Lebanon, Hamas in Gaza, the Hutas in Yemen, the Iran proxies in Syria and in, on the West Bank. So they are fighting on multiple fronts. And they're winning, by the way. But World War III can break out any moment. As I said Sunday, we are just one retaliatory strike away from World War III. As a matter of fact, Iran has warned America. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. I, for one, have quaked in my boots, but they think they're scary. So tonight, we're going to look at the Jeremiah 49 prophecy about Elam. There are prophecies, like we learned in the book of Isaiah, that are having near fulfillment and a future fulfillment. And there are many who believe, well, listen, as it always is in the prophecy, uh, among the prophecy guys, there's a great division here. I just want to tell you that up front. Many believe this happened in the 6th century. Many believe that this is going to happen soon. So it's interesting to take a look at it, and you can look at it and decide for yourself whether that's the case or not. But many critics say that these prophecies are not relevant for today. But here's the thing. They've made these comments five, ten years ago without the benefit of what's going on right now. So tonight, I wanna, as I said, I want to look at that prophecy in Jeremiah 49, beginning in verse 31. So let's begin by reading the whole prophecy. It's not very long. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning Elam, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the mainstay of their might, and I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them from all those winds, and there shall be no nation to which those driven out of Elam shall not come. I will terrify Elam before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them. My fierce anger, declares the Lord, I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them, and I will set my throne in Elam and destroy their king and officials, declares the Lord. But in the latter days I will restore the fortunes of Elam, declares the Lord. So, just by the word of God, there is a future fulfillment in this passage of Scripture, with that last line. But Jeremiah 49.35 says, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the mainstay of their might. Now, if you look at the map, that section marked as Elam is where many of Iran's defensive systems are located, including their underground missile silos. They're portable rocket launchers that are capable of launching ballistic missiles. It is also where, by the way, the Bashar nuclear plant is located. Now, Iran, which was ancient Persia and Elam, have been known for centuries to be expert archers. The bow and the arrow were their strength. Well, today, they consider their strength their nuclear weapon when it's fully developed, which scientists don't know if it's fully developed yet or not, or if we're only a week or two away from that happening. The Israeli prime minister threatened to strike Iran. Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel may have to act against Iran unilaterally to curb it from achieving its nuclear goal. Now, he said that in Al Jazeera News back in 2013. On May 23, 2023, <coughs> 
According to the Jerusalem Associated Press, the Israeli government's national security advisor on Tuesday said a new nuclear facility being built by Iran would not be immune from attack. Despite assessments by experts, it will be beyond the reach of last-ditch U.S. bunker-busting bombs. He made those comments in response to Associated Press report that said the new facility appears to be as deep as 100 meters, which is 328 feet below ground. The Israeli National Security Advisor, speaking at a security conference near Tel Aviv, said it was not surprised by the report, noting that Iran has other underground facilities. While he acknowledged the location would complicate any potential, any potential rather military strike on the facility, he said there are still solutions to the challenge. I Meaning Israel already knows how to blow up that plant. Israel has said Hamas today, Hezbollah next and then Iran. Israel can't exist with their enemies around them because what happened on October 7th is going to happen again. Israel cannot allow Iran to become a nuclear-capable country because Iran will wipe Israel off the face of the map. In an October 23rd press release, Representative Kim said, Iran has made it very clear that its goal is to wipe Israel off the map and its malign influence campaign and support for terrorist groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, in the Middle East, it's made it very clear, very clear that they are actually contributing to Iran's goal of wiping out Israel. For far too long, we have not taken these threats seriously enough. Now Iran is dangerously close to developing an atomic weapon that is more blatant and is more blatantly supporting attacks on the Israeli people. The administration said that the $6 billion in unfrozen funds were only intended for non-sanctioned goods such as food and medicine. We know, of course, that the money is fungible, and Iran has always had ways to launder the proceeds of unfrozen funds. It's another definition of stupid right there, giving Iran $6 billion. So, Mr. North, uh, can, how can the Iranian regime elude the monitoring by the Treasury Department to use the unfrozen funds to finance inter international terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah? That was a question. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't include the answer, but we, we know that they have since then said they're going to freeze those accounts again, but it, it's apparent that Iran still has a way to access those funds, even if we do. So by taking out the Bashar nuclear plant, Israel will assure that Iran will never have nuclear capabilities, and they have to assure that. Reading the newspapers, watching the news, you'll all agree that things are heating up in the Middle East. Iran is becoming increasingly involved in all of this. In fact, as I said, they are beginning to warn the United States. The editor-in-chief of the London-based Ra'alum newspaper said, according to my sources, Hezbollah and Iran informed the U.S. that they have a deadline. So they've given us until Friday before the Hezbollah Secretary General general speech to the end of the aggression. So we have till Friday to end the aggression in Gaza. Otherwise, it would mean entering into direct war with the entire resistance access. You see what he's saying? If we don't stop what's going on in Hamas, if the United States doesn't stop it by Friday, we're in danger of, of now incurring the wrath of Hamas, Hezbollah, the Hutus, and all the rest of the gang. An online internet news source reported that Hezbollah chief Syed Hassan Nasrallah's speech on Friday will include a clear stance on the United States military reinforcements in the eastern Mediterranean and on the direct intervention of the ongoing war in Gaza, a media report said. Nasrallah will also address several messages to the United States side, and his stance will not be pacifying, but rather it will be an escalation. He will speak on behalf of the entire access, not only Hezbollah. And the Daily added, added for the speaker, said that he has told his visitors that he understands the threats of war for which Lebanon is not ready. London Secretary of State Anthony Blinken issued a warning this week for the United States that we would act swiftly and decisively if we're under attack from Iran or its proxies in the Middle East. Now, I don't know if he knows the definition of swiftly and decisively since we've been under attack there for the last three weeks. 
His warning came as the White House accused Iran of facilitating U.S. attacks on military bases in Syria and Iraq in the last week. So Iran's involvement in all of this, I believe, is going to lead to the destruction of that power plant. I mean, listen, Israel's got to take that out no matter what. That has to go. And that may lead to the next part of this prophecy. And I will bring up Elam from the four winds, from the four quarters of the heaven, and I will scatter them to all those winds, and there shall be no nation to which those driven out of Elam shall come. Now, in the Bible, when you hear, see this wordage, it's usually referring to refugees. And some believe that as that nuclear plant is destroyed, it's going to create a nuclear fallout. And that nuclear fallout is going to cause people to flee from that area into all the nation, all the areas around them. Jeremiah 49, 37 says, I will terrify Elam before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them. My fierce anger declares the Lord. I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. So Iran and its proxies have vowed to wipe Israel off the face of the map many times over, over the years. And all they're doing is arousing the anger of God. Iran will not be completely destroyed because that's not going to happen until Ezekiel 38, but they're going to suffer the consequences. They're, they're not going to know peace. They're not going to know peace at all for trying to destroy Israel. God is going to have his vengeance on them. But there's actually good news for Alam. I will set my throne in Alam and destroy their kings and officials, declares the Lord. But in the latter days, I'll restore the fortunes of Alam, declares the Lord. Now, we're not certain what God means by establishing his throne there. Perhaps it's when Jesus is ruling on a throne in the millennial kingdom and one of the saints is over Elam, over Iran. But believe it or not, the gospel is exploding in Iran. It's exploding. People are coming to Christ in multitudes. In fact, it's been said that it's easy to share the, easier to share the gospel in Iran, Iran than it is here. Which, by the way, America is one of the hardest places to share the gospel message. America needs missionaries. But the people of Iran are more open to hear the gospel than our own people are. The kingdom of heaven is growing in Elan, and perhaps that was, that's what God means. Praise the Lord, right? In the last days, the fortunes of Elam will be restored. Even Elam, even, even that ancient country, Elam, Iran today, who hates Israel, who hates God, who hates Christians, even they could be saved. In the end, there will be a remnant. Let's pray. Lord, we continue to pray for the peace of Israel. We continue to pray for the soldiers there that have lost their lives. Lord, we pray for their families. We pray for your peace and comfort for them. We pray, Lord, for the hostages, for those who are still uh, taken captive, still in Gaza. I pray that they're found, and I pray that they're found safe, Lord, and brought home. Lord, we lift this all up to you because it is more than we can bear. But Lord, we're grateful that even a place like that, even a place as dark as that place is, as hateful as that place is, you still have your people there. How amazing is that, Lord? We pray for the Christians in Iran. We pray for the Christians throughout the Middle East who suffer, suffer greatly for committing their life to you in ways that we couldn't imagine. We pray for them, Lord, and we pray that our hearts in this country would be softened to the gospel. We ask all this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen.